Welcome to Traverse PC's live demo on Quick View and Drawings. My name is John. I'm an LS here in Oregon. I work for Traverse PC. Uh, just this morning I was out uh, putting stakes out for a project I actually staked out last summer. We've been working on uh, getting that to bid. Contractor showed up a day early and had already driven over a couple of hubs, but I got the rest of the stakes out and uh, Hopefully we have an understanding about not ruining any of the rest of the hubs out there. Um, but pretty excited to talk to you about our, our QuickView technology. You're going to learn how QuickView really takes the work out of drafting. I do have to tell you though that if you draw in Traverse PC like you do in CAD, TPC won't save you any time. So you really need to take your CAD hat off and put your TPC hat on. Uh, I've used had used CAD for years and years and years and uh, I've used this quick view technology to do all my drafting Traverse PC for over 20 years now and I just can't imagine going back to, to using CAD it would just take too long and it wouldn't be any fun really this this quick view uh, drawing is just kind of a fun thing to do and I hope I can convey some of that a little bit today as we take a look at it so let's jump in uh, what is quick view let's take a quick look at some Traverse groups tags and traverse drawing settings and I'll refer back to this outline as we go so you know each section we're going to tackle. So let's take a look at, at what Quick View is. I'm going to come back here. I've opened up one of our sample surveys called Learn uh, Quick View. We can go into sample surveys anytime and uh, I've chosen the one that says Learn Quick View. There are also some uh, finished surveys in here you can look at. We use quite a bit of these in our learning center and our learning guides. First thing I want to do is in this task manager I want to drop down to the learning guides and uh, I'll show you how to access these from the learning center at the end if I have time. But I'm just going to click on the quick view learning guide. Traverse PC is going to open that up uh, in a web browser pulling that in from our website and I'm just going to drop down here to page 6. And I want to start with this diagram. This is a diagram of, of what this quick view technology is that I'm going to be talking about today. When you work in Traverse PC, you either bring data in, import it from GNSS or Total Station or whatever, or you create it inside Traverse PC and your data ends up in these traverses. Boundary, topo, um, site work, um, roads, alignments, I mean, it's, it, everything ends up in a traverse. And then I simply tag the traverses that I want to include in a drawing. And I can have any number of drawings in a survey, and each drawing remembers which traverses are tagged or used in that drawing. Then I use this thing called Traverse Drawing Settings to tell Traverse PC when you draw this traverse in this drawing, use this line type, symbol, color, labels. I want the annotations this size, I want them formatted this way, above, below the line, whatever and Traverse PC creates the drawing entities. Now I use entities because you uh, CAD folks in Traverse PC we call them objects, drawing objects. But basically in CAD terminology it creates all the entities for me. And then I simply come in and modify the ones that aren't exactly the way I want them. And the next thing I know I've got a drawing done. So these Traverse drawing settings are going to really produce 80, 90, even not greater than 90% of the drawing for me. I'm simply going to come in and add my narrative, pull in a north arrow, um, move a few things around, and I've got a drawing ready to go. And of course, then I can make a drawing template of that. So in the next drawing I do like this, I have less work to do even. So this is that quick view technology, and it's what we're going to spend the next uh, hour or so on. So let's drop in and take a look. Remember we said we're going to take a look at traverse groups, tags and traverse drawing settings. So the first thing I want to do is introduce you to traverse groups. Uh, we use groups for drawings, traverses, surfaces, and they're just a way for me to organize my data, my survey data, but in this particular case you're going to see it helps me get to the drawing faster as well. So I'm going to turn on groups and I'm going to select lots 2, 3, and 4 and in the tools menu I'm going to say add these to a group and I've got a pre-selected group called Lots. I'm going to put them in that group. So here they are. This is the group called Lots. If 
those are my traverses. I've got setbacks in here as well, so let's add those to a group. And I think I call, yeah, setbacks. And then I've got these foundations. So let's go ahead and put these in a group. Now, if I don't have the a group name that I want, I can add it so I don't have foundations. Let's just come and add it. Traverse BC will say, do you want to add that group? And select it for me, so I choose OK. So now I've got the traverses the way I want. I want to talk to you about tagging now. So I'm going to select the setbacks group, and Traverse PC is going to tag these, or select these traverses, and I can simply untag them, and all those setbacks went away. So I tag them, untag them. Some of you might uh, think in terms of, or people say, are those like layers? Well, you can use traverses for some of what you would use layers for in CAD, and this would be like turning the layers on and off, except in the case of traverses, I untag them. Okay, uh, then um, I apply what we call traverse drawing settings, and I want to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to select the foundation traverses. I'm going to right click one of them, and here's traverse drawing settings right in the middle of this pop up menu. So let's go ahead and open up the traverse drawing settings, and it tells me I have three selected traverses. So selected means highlighted, they're highlighted in the traverse manager. So I can go into a tab in the Traverse Drawing setting called Fill, and I can say, I want to do a solid fill for these, and Traverse PC then is going to change the way those foundations appear in the drawings that they match the settings. I'll give you another example of this. Let's click on the Setbacks tab. Okay. Now, Setbacks, I'm not going to apply to the foundations here, I am going to apply though to the lots. So let's come up and select the lots instead. Let's go to Traverse Drawing Settings. Let's go into Setbacks and tell it I want to draw setback lines as a dashed line. I want to use a real thin line because I want it to be kind of diminutive in a gray color. Let's apply that. So now I have all my setback lines. And uh, I can't express enough or convey enough how much better this is than running a CAD lisp routine where I have to go around and select each lot or select each lot line to draw these setbacks. In Traverse BC, I've already selected the lots here, and I just use the Traverse drawing settings to tell it how I want to draw the setbacks, and I hit apply or okay, and I've got them. Think about a 100 lot subdivision. I select 100 lots and do those same steps, and now I have setbacks in all 100 lots. I mean, I just, this is absolutely amazing, and this is why I say it kind of puts the fun back in uh, all of this, uh, just because I get to do all this through these Traverse Drawing Settings, and I use those a lot. Okay, let's go on and talk about um, moving objects and uh, selecting objects. Oh no, let's talk about this one. TPC gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, see if I can kind of explain how, how this works. So I just told Traverse BC, I want to take these traverses, tag them, use the Traverse drawing settings to create them in the drawing. So all my entities are created. But I could just as easily have come into this drawing and manually drawn some stuff too. I could have come in and drawn these two lines, and I could have said, I want to draw a fillet between those, selected this line, selected this line, use the mouse to define the size of the fillet, or I can see in my status bar at the bottom it's telling me the radius. So I could shift the left click and enter a specific radius, or I can just say I'm done. So I now have CAD objects entities that I just drew myself. And I can, I can do this all the time in Traverse PC, but remember I said it's not going to save you time. And I, I want to show you why. So in, in Traverse PC, I have the best of either point-based or drawing-based. So I can do drawing-based and come in and do this fillet inside here, but let me show you how Traverse PC does this um, with traverses and traverse drawing settings. So I've told Traverse PC that I want to draw a setback line inside these traverses, and this traverse goes from 7 to 8 to 9 to 10. Okay, those are the survey points, 
and it's simply drawing them in the sequence of the points. I'm going to show you the traverse for this, and I can access that traverse by right-clicking the point label for point 9, or the symbol for point 9, or the end of a line, and simply say, edit that traverse. And Traverse BC opens up that traverse and takes me right to that point. Kind of a neat little deal. I'm going to tell Traverse BC that I want to change the point type to something called a point of intersection. So the most common ones have hotkeys, like F10, but I'm going to tell it I want it to be a point of intersection. So it labels it as a PI. Now the great thing about a PI is it's a special point. It says as soon as you give me a radius or an arc length or a tangent um, or a central angle, uh, one piece of curve information, I can go ahead and float in that curve. And that's exactly what it has done. Traverse PC has come in and it's floated in this PT9 on the tangent coming out of the curve, the PI, and it's floated this PC9 in on the tangent coming into the PI. It's also come in and hidden the PI in the drawing, but I can tell it to draw that if I want. And look what else it's done. It said, I had a setback line that was based on the configuration without the curve in it. I just put in this little curb return here, and now the setback reflects that curb return. Better yet, what if I came back to this traverse and to that PI and I said, oh, that was the wrong radius. It should have been a 20 foot radius. Look what it did. It refloated or repositioned the PC and PT along those original tangents and it adjusted the setback automatically for me. So compare that with what you just saw me do coming over here and drawing this fillet over here where I would have to come in and recreate all this stuff and I can't imagine trying to recreate the setbacks inside of that versus what Traverse PC just did over here with this curb return at point 9. Okay, so I want you to just get a little bit of a feel for the fact that Traverse PC uses these Traverse and, and these Traverse drawing settings to generate the drawings for me without me ever having to do CAD. I'm going to show you one more little final thing here which is kind of interesting. You remember that I went into these traverses, into the Traverse drawing settings, and I said draw the setback lines for me. And Traverse PC went ahead and put those in. Now it put them all in 10 feet away from their property lines because I haven't yet told it which lines are front, back, that sort of thing. Uh, let me just drop over here and do that. So I'm going to go to this lot line, I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to further define that by telling it it's a setback type. And I'm going to say that's a front line, not a side or rear. And Traverse PC comes in and moves that setback line back because now it knows this is a front line and it has to use the front setback distance for the setback line. Let's go over to our traverses and instead of going into Traverse Drawing Settings, let's go into Traverse Properties. And again, I've got the properties for those selected traverses and I'm just going to modify the lot setbacks. So for these traverses, I said I want my front setback to be 15 feet, but what if I made it 20 feet and then chose, okay, Traverse PC just moved that setback line in 20 feet. So even after I put setbacks in, I can go back and say, oh yeah, the CCNRs or the city code requires a 20 foot setback, and I just change the setback value and those setback lines adjust automatically or redraw automatically. That's the whole concept of quick view technology. It just takes all the work out of me having to do all this inside of, inside of uh, CAD. Okay, so um, I'm going to come back to the Traverse settings and the Traverse drawing settings and introduce you to another tab called Lot Labels. And I'm going to tell it I want to label each lot with the name. I want it to be black. I want to use a font type and a size. Let's do the same thing for square feet. I want that to be black. I'm going to set the decimals to two decimals just to match what I have shown in another view. And the size. And let's go ahead and tell Travis PC we want to draw those. So here's the lot area, 43,450.99 square feet. 
here's that same area over here in the Traverse Manager, 43450.99. Both views, the Traverse Manager and the Drawing View, are simply reflecting the value of the survey data, in this case the area of the lot. Remember I came in to this Traverse and I said um, I wanted to modify that return from 15 to 20. What if I put it back to 15? Okay. As soon as I do that, Traverse PC comes back and it says, okay, I'm going to refresh this real quick. I think I have to do that oh, right here. It's a refresh button. Okay. It redisplays that updated area in the Traverse Manager. It automatically did that in the drawing view redisplayed that updated area. So I just changed the radius and not only did the setback line get updated, but now the lot has a new area. So that gets reflected in the area label for that lot in the area shown in the Traverse Manager. And if I wanted to, I could show you just one of the reports real quick. There are lots of reports in here. But this report says generate certain information for each one of the selected traverses. So these are the three that I've selected. I didn't, I'm not doing all of them. I'm just doing the selected. And I just want to show you the traverse summary real quick. So here's the traverse summary for lots two, three, and four. And here's the square foot area of lot, lot four. I've got three decimal places, so it's showing 406 instead of 0.41. Okay. But here's a third view now showing this Traverse report and all these views are showing the correct area because it's all based on the survey data, not the text I drew inside the drawing, which is how it is with CAD. So I just want you to get a real quick idea that um, Traverse BC, because of this quick view technology, is drawing this drawing for me based on the survey data. And as I change that survey information, in this case by changing the radius on a curb return, everything gets reflected in the drawing from that change. And I didn't have to go in and redraw it. It just did that for me automatically. Okay, let's take a look at our outline again. And I want to take a look at this selecting objects in Quick View because this is a really important feature of Quick View technology. Uh, let's come back out. This is what happens in CAD all the time. I just bumped that line. Uh, that line no longer ends where the arc starts. There's the discrepancy there. I can't tell you how many CAD drawings I've gotten over the years uh, where this happens. And I go to stake this out and I've got two points to stake out because they're not the same. Or I go to uh, put in a, a curb and I find out the curb height's a foot and a half, not six inches. Uh, these little mistakes just happen inside a CAD all the time. That's why we have plot checkers. Um, and the first thing I do when I get a drawing is I convert all of these entities to traverses so I can check their closure. I can make sure that they start and stop at the same place and Traverse PC has some great tools. Uh, if I give it a tolerance, it can tell me, hey, you got a problem here. You need to look at this before it converts it. So. I have to convert everything in CAD, but this is what happens. I just kind of bump stuff uh, and it moves. Uh, I'm going to come in and select these lines. I could do a window cross, those same kind of CAD commands. Uh, the great thing about once they're selected, I can move them around, pick them up and move them around. Okay. Or I can come in and select that again. I can just pick one of them and I can delete and they work as kind of an ad hoc group. So all of the ones that are selected got deleted because I deleted one of the selected. Okay, so you saw how easy it was for me in, in a CAD environment to just come in and bump those. Let's do the same thing with Traverse PC's line. So here's the line from 9PT to 10 of lot 4. Let's just bump it. Oh, it didn't move. Well, Traverse PC just figured out I'm trying to move a line I can't move. And it tells me no qualify objects were selected for this operation. I can't move that line. I physically can't because it's tied to survey data. So I can't just inadvertently bump it inside Traverse PC. Now I can move a line label around wherever I want it. That's just fine. Okay, get it out of the way of something else. It still remembers it's tied to this line and it now has recorded the new offset from the center of the line. So if this line moves, this label is going to move with it based on that offset. That's not a problem. 
And if I want to be intentional, I can come in and select this foundation, right click, modify objects and move it. But Traverse PC is going to say, do you want me to select all the objects associated with that Traverse and continue? And I can say yes, pick my base point or snap to a base point, and now I can pick this up and move it wherever I want because the client wants it a little farther down here but still within the setbacks. Well, I just moved the survey data and the drawing is just once again reflecting the position of those foundation points with whatever drawing settings I've selected for it. So when I need to move something or want to move something, I can, but Traverse BC kind of is watching over my shoulder so I don't accidentally bump something. Um, the other thing you're noticing as I'm doing this is that uh, as I put the cursor over a line, I am accenting that line so I can see where that line begins and ends. And I can choose the accent and color and whether or not to do that. And then you see I also get a tooltip. And again, I can choose whether or not to display this tooltip. But the great thing is it tells me this is a tangent between points 9.9pt point, 9 and 10. Those are the survey points. It's being drawn by lot 4. And it gives me some information about the line itself, bearing and distance, and the endpoints of the line, the coordinates. So tooltips are a really great thing inside of Traverse PC, and I use them for everything. So I can come in right away and say, oh yeah, that's a lot label for lot four. That's the Traverse. It's 15 hundredths of an inch high, and there's the square feet and acres associated with that lot. So valuable information and a little information on kind of how we select stuff inside Traverse PC. Okay, let's take a look at panning and zooming and this real important part about zoom points. So I certainly come in, can come in, and you've seen me come in and pan and zoom here. I can click the mouse wheel and as I move away from the wheel it moves where the panning happens. I can zoom in, zoom out with the mouse. Okay, do a previous zoom if I want. I can zoom out, I can zoom in with buttons. Uh, Traverse BC also has hotkeys for these, and we've used the hot, same hotkeys since 1987 when we started. Uh, but this is a, a real neat deal. I have a button here called Zoom Page. So no matter how far in I'm zoomed or where I'm zoomed, I just hit Zoom Page and I'm right back to the full page. And I'll show you this again a little later, but basically I always work on a page inside of Traverse PC. So this is an 8.5 by 11. Here's the full page size. I've specified margins between the edge of the page and my border for my survey. And the whole time I'm working in the drawing view, I'm just inside that border. That saves real estate on my computer screen so I can see things bigger and, and better. But this is the thing I want to point out here real quick. We call this zoom points. So how many times when I was using CAD years ago did I get to a, a property corner where I had phone risers, power, sewer, water, property corner, um, a power pole for the overhead utilities, and when I would go to zoom in for something I needed to do, I had this jumbo of text and symbols and line widths right over the top of each other. So what I would do is I would move that out of the way or resize it, do the work I needed to do, and then before I was all done, if I was going to redraw this, I had to reset the text size, put it back where it was. It just took a lot of time. Watch what I do in Traverse BC. I have a toggle here called zoom points. When I turn it off, the points aren't zoomed. When I turn it on, they are. So when I zoom in tight like this, I turn zoom points off, and I've told Traverse PC that when I go to plot this, I want this text to be a tenth of an inch. And when I zoom in, of course it makes it it's zoomed size, even though it would be a tenth of an inch at plotting size. So when I zoom points off, Traverse PC just redraws that at a tenth of an inch. It does the same thing with the line thicknesses, with the symbol sizes, and all the text. So now I have this built-in space that continues to be space as I zoom in and out. So now I can come in here and actually take a look at, oh, that's a 14-foot tangent in there. Or, oh yeah, that's that offset, and the reason I needed to change that offset because it didn't pick up that this was a front line. Okay, it thought it was a side lot line. So I can make those kinds of decisions easily, and then when I'm all done, Turn zoom points back off, zoom back to the page, and I'm right back where I was. I never could do that easily inside of CAD. Uh, Traverse BC does it just like falling off a log, and I can't tell you 
how much time that has saved me over the years just having that one zoom points option. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at Traverse Drawing Settings. And I have to tell you, this is really, well, it's the most important concept in this seminar. So if you don't walk away with anything else, I want you to walk away with, with uh, this part of the, the concept here. And I'm going to start by taking a look at this Lot 2 down here. And I'm going to double click anything that's part of Lot 2. Could be a line, could be a, a line label. It really doesn't matter. But Traverse PC, with that double click, brings up the Traverse drawing settings for just that Traverse, Lot 2. And remember I said this is where we choose color, line types, thicknesses, all that kind of stuff. So let me just show you how this works. I've chosen to draw this traverse with a solid line, a hundredth of an inch thick. I'm going to choose two hundredths and apply. Oh, let me zoom back in with the window so it holds that for me. There we go. So let's double click that again. Two hundredths of an inch and, and it draws it for me automatically because it's being drawn by the traverse settings. Let's pick a different point symbol. Let's pick a, okay, here's my existing 5 8 inch rebar. Let's go ahead and select that. And again, let's apply that. So now Traverse BC has redrawn all the point symbols in that Traverse as a 5 8 inch rebar, existing 5 8 inch rebar. And I can come in and set the label size. I can set the style of it. Um, Let's take a look at coming over here to this curve over, curve over here, and let's go ahead and label that using the Traverse Drawing Settings. So I'm going to go into a tab called Curves and Spirals. I'm going to label it, and I'm going to choose how I want to label that. I'm going to tell it I want to align it, which is going to have it be curved text aligned to the curve itself. And I'm going to tell it how I want to format that. So I can format aligned labels, I can format stacked labels separately using the codes down here. And you're basically going to set the labels the way you want, make those part of your uh, settings, and just reuse those over and over again. So I'm going to put my bearing on top. I'm going to do a next line, come down and do the uh, distance in my long cord. Then I'm going to split the label so the rest of it is below the line. And I'm going to do a line break there also. And you'll get familiar with these uh, pretty quick as you use it. Now I'm going to apply that. So now my, my uh, label is up, but I did it wrong. I should have come in and put a little bit different character right here. I need the piping instead of the slash. So I made a mistake. Traverse PC says, oh, just go back and put the right one in. And that might be how I want to draw those. Um, I might also want to say, no, I'd rather do these as a stacked okay, with a leader. And when I draw a leader, I want it to be a nice looking leader. So let's do a solid line. Oops, pick the right one here. And I want to do an arrowhead on it that's solid and pick the size, the angle, the color. Okay, so now I'm going to get a stacked label with a stacked curve over here. I want you to see that as I switch the side, the leader switches sides automatically and it'll even justify the text automatically for me. So I've told Traverse PC, this is how I want to draw this Traverse and do all the annotations. Now I could go into the Traverse drawing settings like we did earlier and set them all up this way just with one click or sometimes I'll do this. I've got one of these set up the way I want. So I'm going to right click, go to Traverse Tools, and I'm simply going to copy those. So any other lot that I click, any other Traverse I click, is going to get those same settings. And then when I'm all done, I just right click and I'm done. So I've now come in and they all draw the same way. I need to go in and set those leader settings so they're all the same as well. Okay, here's my little curb return up here. I might want to put that leader on the other side and see how it re-justifies that based on which side it's on. So a lot of the busy work just kind of gets taken care of for me. And now I've got consistent 
uh, drawing uh, features, attributes, because I copied those traverse settings, traverse drawing settings to each of the other traverses. Just a really kind of neat way to, um, to generate this drawing. And you can see I'm starting to get at what I want. I'm starting to have the lines and symbols and labels just the way I want them without really doing much work at all. Okay, I'm gonna move pretty quick here. Uh, let's drop down to smart objects, save time, and let's take a look at rotating survey data versus rotating a drawing to kind of uh, bring this home for us a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in again. Uh, notice that this bearing from one to two is north 90 east. I'm gonna come in and rotate the entire survey about this point one and I'm going to rotate it 10 degrees. Let's go ahead and compute that. Look what happened. I rotated the survey so the survey points got rotated and Traverse PC updated that bearing for me automatically. Now the distance is still the same. The rotation didn't change the distance between one and two, but it did change the bearing between one and two. And in fact, it changed the bearing between all the points and all these labels got updated automatically. I didn't have to come in and type in a new label or update a label or update a bearing of a long cord. Didn't have to do any of that. Traverse PC just did all that for me. And remember I, I said earlier that Traverse PC even remembers the offset of this label I moved. So I've now rotated this line. It's not in the same position as it was, but the label remembered where it was offset to the center of the line. So it's drawing in the right place also. Now what if um, what if I had rotated the survey instead? So I'm going to undo that right back where I was. What if I came in and said, I want to rotate this survey on the page. So now I'm rotating it without changing any survey coordinates. So the bearing between one and two doesn't change. It's still 90 east because I rotated the survey on the page, not the survey data. So the drawing is smart enough to know when I am rotating survey data and I update the labels and when I'm simply rotating the survey on the page and I keep the labels the same. All that's just sort of built in and part of this quick view technology that we've used in Traverse PC for so long. Okay, uh, let's drop out here and look at our outline. And uh, I wanna focus in just a little bit longer on um, these smart drawing objects and uh, object settings. Kind of combine those a little bit. And let's take a look at how a legend works inside of Traverse PC. So we're going to put ourselves back in this lower left corner here. And let's go ahead and add a legend. I can either insert a legend here, or I can use the pull down here, insert a legend here, or I could have right clicked. Okay, lots of ways for you to do this or set up your own toolbars. But I'm gonna tell Traverse PC, I want a legend I'm going to put a header on it. I want it to be an automatic legend. And I'm going to draw a border. So it's going to put that in for us. And remember, we chose a point symbol called existing 5 8 rebar. So that's the symbol it brought in with that name for that symbol. But watch. Remember I showed you how we changed the traverse drawing settings to change the line type and symbols for this traverse. But I want this symbol right here to be different. So I put the cursor over until it's highlighted and I get a tooltip. And now what do I do in any Windows program? I right click and I go to properties. And Traverse PC brings up the property for just that one symbol. And I can come in now and so I, I can say, you know, instead of an existing 5H, that was an iron pipe that I found. And I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. So now Traverse PC is going to redraw that symbol as an iron pipe. The symbol properties that I just chose for that overrode the traverse drawing settings. Okay, So I can say I want all the rest of them to be drawn as an existing 5 8 rebar, but I'm going to change just the ones that I want. And look what happened in the legend. Traverse PC added that automatically to the legend for me. And I can come in now and say, you know, I want that one to be first up here, so I just drag and drop it. Or I can right click iron pipe and I'm going to properties and I'm going to switch to all caps found one inch iron pipe and modify that. And I've just changed 
how it described that symbol in the legend. Now, if I found a lot of one-inch iron pipes, and that's generally what I have in my area here, if it's not a rebar, it's generally a one-inch iron pipe, I can go into the uh, settings, and in the drawing settings tab, I can edit the symbols. So I can go into that symbol, and instead of having it say iron pipe, I can have it say found one inch I period P period, all in uppercase. And when I open up the symbol list again, that's what it'll say, and I don't have to come in and change it afterwards. So it's very customizable when I want it to be, and very easy for me to override those properties when I need to. And that's what we call smart legend. It did it that way because I told it I want to add those point symbols automatically. Now, if I've got a symbol like a tick or something that I use for topo, I can simply highlight that in the legend and hide it. So it's still being used in the survey, but I'm telling Traverse BC by hiding it, not to show it in the legend. Uh, a lot of people like to come in now and fill the background of these. So use something like a, a beige color here, fill that in, just to add a little style to their, their drawings when they want to. Uh, sometimes that presents just a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and uh, keep this discussion going on smart objects by dropping down to text. And I want to talk to you about record data, uh, modified attributes, association, and resetting those. Uh, kind of mix all those up in one here. So I've got a distance that Traverse BC has put on this line because that's the inverse based on the survey data. So this line is the line between points one and two and the distance between those two points, the measured distance, is 284.88. Okay. Now, what if my record data is 285? Let's, let's put that in. So I'm going to right click and go to properties. I've been doing this all along now. I'm going to add square brackets. Okay. So let's call this uh, 285. Is that what I want? Yep. 0 0.00 square brackets. Now, I'm going to go into my legend, and I'm going to say append a text item to the legend, and my symbol is bracket, space, bracket, and I'm going to come down here and in caps again, say record data. So I've just identified that this is record data in here, and that's what the brackets mean. So I put that in the, the legend very, very easily. Now, I want you to know that originally, the Traverse drawing said, Traverse uh, drawing settings said, center that 284 between points one and two. So halfway center it. I just came in and added, added some record data and it recentered it for me. Brilliant. So nice. Now you might say, I don't do my record data like that. Um, I like to come down and split it. So I want to put the record data on the next line. So I just edit it that way. And now Traverse BC centers the measured data and the record data for me. Pretty nice. Um, notice that uh, in the tooltip, if I look at the top line, so look right up here in the tooltip, look at the top line, it says 28488, has my record 285, and then it has an asterisk. The asterisk means I've modified the text. So the Traverse drawing settings are no longer allowed to come in and change the text. I've, I've overridden that and it's going to respect the fact that I changed that. But Traverse drawing settings can still come in and maybe change the size of it. So if I want this to be a little larger, it can still change the size because I haven't changed the size manually. Okay, uh, So I can still change whatever attributes via the Traverse drawing settings that I haven't manually changed myself. Kind of nice. And that, that would affect the symbol here. Remember I changed the symbol to 12 hundredths? I could come in and set all the rest of the symbols to 8 hundredths of an inch. This would still remain 12 hundredths because I had overridden it. Now, I want to talk about um, these changed attributes and modifying them. So remember when I put the cursor over this label, it said, I know I'm the label between points 1 and 2. If I were to drag this label down and put the tooltip over it, it knows it's still the label between one and two. So changing its position or changing these attributes and putting in record data doesn't change the fact that Traverse BC knows it's still the label for the line between one and two. 
Well, that's nice because anytime I want, I can right click that label and up here where it says modify attributes, I can come up and say, okay, I want to reset the modified attributes. And resetting modified attributes will say, go in and reset anything I manually overrode. So let's do that. So now I'm back to my 284.88. I'm at 12 hundredths of an inch. I've recentered the label on the line between one and two, and I've recreated the text based on the survey data. So it's whatever the distance is between those two points, which is 284.88. So anytime I want, I can come in and reset those modified attributes and get right back to where I, I started. And this little hierarchy is really important and it's a big part of the um, QuickView technology. I start by having the traverse drawing settings draw as much of the traverse as I can because that's the fastest. But I still have the ability to come in and modify or override individual um, objects however I want. Change the symbol, change the text, whatever. And Traverse PC honors that change that I've made even though I changed the underlying Traverse drawing settings. It's a real neat way for all this to work. Okay, I'm going to switch off of Traverse drawing settings for a moment now and in the interest of time let's drop down to drawing settings. And I'm going to take a look at distance units and extra bearing spaces. So I've been modifying the settings for an individual Traverse or in the case I just showed you for an individual label or symbol. But what if I want the whole drawing to change? Well, I'm going to go into Tools, Drawing Settings, and let's just take a look. I'm going to go into Miscellaneous, and right now I don't have any units on the distance. They're just 284.88. But I'm going to Apply Distance Units and hit the Apply button. So now I have my abbreviation for feet on every distance in here, including the curve labels and all of these tangent labels. Pretty neat. That means that any drawing can use whatever unit abbreviation I've set for the survey to annotate those distances in the drawing. Or in this particular drawing, I could come in and I could say, you know, I want everything to just say feet in this drawing, and now I've got feet. Or take that out of there and have it use the default, which is just the apostrophe there. Uh, look at the bearings. I've got bearing options. So here's what I want. I want an extra bearing by the north, south, east, west. Let's apply that. So now I've got that little bit of extra separation between the bearing value and the quadrant values. Here's the extra spaces throughout. So I get a little more spacing throughout, which helps it reproduce. Remember I said I can pick these things up and move them. So once I've got things the way I want, I can come in and say, okay, I want to just do that a little bit. Or I can come in and clear the background text on all of these as well. I can't remember exactly. Here we go. Clear the background text on those. And I can have the, the text take care of obliterating that setback line. So you get a feel for kind of how flexible this is um, and how I can really get close to what I want without ever having to come in and modify a thing. So you're going to learn real quick how to come in and have Traverse PC um, generate just what you want from the Traverse drawing settings or from the drawing settings themselves. Then I want to talk about one more thing, layers, before we jump in and uh, talk about drawings. So I'm ready to produce this drawing and I don't need the point labels on there anymore. I've used them as kind of an aid uh, for myself while I'm doing the drawing, but I'm ready to turn them off. So I don't do that with the Traverse drawing settings. I simply right click and I go to layer tools. And you're saying, you have layers? Yes, we have layers. And they work a lot like they do in CAD. I can turn them on or off, freeze, thaw, lock, unlock, isolate, ignore. Uh, I'm going to turn this layer off. So all the point labels disappeared because I turned their layer off. Now, the layers are accessible in the layers dialog. Here's that layer I turned off. I can turn it on, turn it back off. I can lock it, freeze it. I can add additional layers. When I do go in and start adding my narrative and text and certificates, I can tell Traverse BC which layer to put those on. 
So I have uh, a lot of the same layer controls that I have in CAD, and I do use those. Uh, those are helpful. And we'll see in a little bit that when I go to export this as a CAD drawing, the CAD file has those same layers in it. So I'm working with the same layers in Traverse BC that someone's working with in my CAD drawing that I set them. So Traverse BC has layers, and you can use them as much as you'd like. Okay, let's take a look at drawings now and take a look at some things that make uh, drawings real easy to use inside of Traverse PC. I'm going to come into the Drawing Manager, which has groups just like the Traverse Manager. So the Traverses, ma Traverse Manager manages all the Traverses. There's a Points Manager where all the points are listed. And I can come in and sort them on description or northing or elevation or point labels, however you want to do that. Okay, It's all part of the Point Manager. But I'm going to work in the Drawing Manager now. And I'm going to create a new drawing just by double-clicking a blank spot. And I'm going to call this Foundations. I'm going to select a template. And a template is just a drawing that I've saved to be reused. And I'm going to do a plan view. Perfect. So Traverse PC just created a new drawing called Foundations based on a template that had stuff in it already. And it's a 14 by 8.5, so a legal size drawing. And Traverse PC went ahead and centered and did a zoom extents on the traverses that I had selected. Remember, we said we could select and untag those traverses, and they wouldn't show up, or tag them and they would. So when I created this new drawing, it used the traverses that were currently tagged in the existing or current drawing and just duplicated those tags in the new drawing. I could have cleared it, started all over if I wanted to. Just one of the, the ways that this works. So let's go into our drawings and let's just take a look at a couple of things. I would, I'm going to generally, when I open a drawing like this, I'm going to zoom extents so I see how big I can fit it on this page. And then I'm going to go up to the scale pull down and say, I don't want 72, I want 80. So now I have 80 feet to the inch, and I can put the cursor over the survey. It changes from an arrow to a plus, hold down the control key, and I can drag and drop the survey anywhere on the page without changing coordinates. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Or I'm going to say, you know, I need to just drag that over. Now I can bring the whole thing over a little bit. And now I've left room over here for a line table or a description or whatever. So real neat way to do zoom extents, pick a scale, and then position on the page where I want. And I can do that anytime. I don't have to pick my page size first. Now, I want you to learn also about paper space versus survey space. So I'm going to delineate paper space. I just highlighted in yellow everything that's paper space. Paper space objects are tied to their nearest corner of the page, and they are tied in inches. So Traverse PC knows that this north arrow is so many inches down and so many inches left of this corner. But let's go ahead and switch from a layout of horizontal to a layout of portrait. And just for the heck of it, instead of a legal, I'm going to switch to a architectural B. So now I have an architectural B drawing, see, and paper space objects still know where they are based on their corner. So they've retained their position to that nearest corner. And I would do like I did before, do a zoom extents. Trial tells me that I can fit this on at 50 feet to the inch. And once I've got 50 feet to the inch, I'm going to position it where I want on the page, and away I go. So I do those same steps all the time inside of Traverse PC. Let's go ahead and put it back. Let's go back to our page setup. Let's go back to a legal. Let's go back to landscape. Now my scale isn't going to be right, but I can do a zoom extents. Go back to that 80 feet to the inch. Reposition it where I want on the page and I'm right back where I left off. So no harm, no foul. Uh, I can delineate survey space, and you can see that survey space are the objects that have survey coordinates. So when I scale the drawing, when I reposition the drawing on the page, 
these are the drawing objects that are affected. Now, I can add new objects in paper space, like the north arrow and the scale bar, or I can add new objects in survey space, like a street name, or a note about a monument that I found out of place. So I can continue to work in survey space, paper space, as I add objects. I'm going to tell you that's as complicated as it gets. Once I learn survey space, paper space, I kind of know how, how things, things work. Now, you saw me do this earlier, but I'm going to show you how nice this is. I'm going to pick lot 4, area, lot 3, area, lot 2, area. Right click to tell them I'm done selecting. And now watch what happens when I move one of these. Do you see how they all move? That's just nice. And I can tell it I'm all done selecting. I've got lots of little sort of tricks and tips inside of Traverse Bees that help, help me do this all the time. Traverse BC is just really great about having this quick view technology save me time uh, because of those. Okay, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this drawing. So uh, here's my foundations. I've turned that all in, but now I need to work on the phase one. So I'm going to create a new drawing called phase one. I'm going to duplicate this existing drawing and I'm going to open the duplicate. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the lots that aren't part of phase two. So I want to turn off lot four and I want to turn off the foundation in lot four. And now I can come in and zoom extents 45 feet to the inch, which means I could probably get a scale of 50 feet to the inch. And I'm going to have to just move these out of the way to get what I want. Drag that over. Now I can bring that over just a little farther get the separation that I want. Okay, so this is phase one. I still have my foundations drawing, just exactly how it was. Now, what if I came in and I rotated this survey? Let's do that 10 degrees about 0.1 again and compute that. So this drawing is now rotated. Well, so is my phase one drawing. See how it reflects the position of those survey points because I rotated them? If I undo the rotation, this drawing's back the way it was, and so is the foundation's drawing back the way it was. So I can have any number of drawings in Traverse PC, and all of them reflect the current state of the survey data. Just a really neat way to have, have this work. Okay, um, I'm going to do something real quick. You see how these line labels are for real short lines, and they're kind of stacked off to the side and don't really fit very well. So let's go ahead and insert a line table. Let's um, put a header on it. Let's have it do an auto which says if a line label doesn't fit on the line, put it in the table. And let's go ahead and draw a border around that. Hit OK. Draw this down to that space where we created for it. Create just a little more space here. And I can see here's my L1, L2. L1 and L2 are in the drawing. And away I go real quick for me to create a table automatically just like I created a legend automatically. So um, let me go ahead and export this drawing a couple of different ways and uh, then let's wrap up. So I'm going to tell Traverse PC that I want to print this drawing and again I can come right here to the tool and do this and I'm going to export this or print it as a Traverse PC PDF. So we supply a PDF driver you can use or you might have a PDF driver of your own, and I'm going to save that. I usually save those PDFs in the same folder as the survey. And here's my PDF, ready to turn into the county or the title company or whoever. And again, I can come in. I hadn't moved these labels around, but just fine-tune the drawing, turn the point labels off, and then print the PDF. Uh, away I go. Or I can come in and say, you know what, I want to go into Tools, and export that as, I'm going to choose an AutoCAD DWG. There's lots of formats in here. Pick the version of AutoCAD you want. A lot of times when I'm working with an architect, I'll say, what version of AutoCAD do you have? Well, he's on 2012 or 2014. So I send them the version that they want or that they can use. And then I export that. And let's go ahead and preview it. This will open it up in a viewer that I have, TrueView 2018. You might have a different viewer. It'll 
work in all of them, I can guarantee you. And as soon as it's flashed a few times and tells me it's ready, we'll go ahead and do a zoom extents. See the layers? Here are the layers in AutoCAD that I had in Traverse PC. And Traverse PC knows that they're on or off, frozen or thawed, locked or unlocked. And I'm just going to do a zoom extents here. And here's my survey in CAD with the layers, the text, the line types, the symbols, the blocks. Uh, someone wouldn't know I hadn't developed this in a CAD program because it comes in so nicely. And so I feel real comfortable sending this off to the engineer, the client, the city, the county, the state, um, and they've got a drawing they can work with inside of whatever CAD system they're using um, right out of Traverse PC. And, and I can do the same for MicroStation, uh, write a DGN file. I can read these files, CAD files, right back into Traverse PC. Uh, Traverse PC is very comfortable with CAD and understands that CAD is kind of the big dog out there. So we have to be able to work with that readily. Okay, so let's just take a look at our outline. I think I'm ready to close this up. Yep. So let's just talk about what we kind of walk away with out of this um, live demo on QuickView. QuickView really draws the survey for you. And you saw me do that. I tagged the traverses I wanted. I set up the way I want to draw them with the traverse drawing settings. Traverse PC generated all the entities, what we call drawing objects. And I just went in and modified the ones that I wanted to be different. I put what I wanted to in legends and line tables. And I used the paper space, survey space stuff to pick my scale, position the drawing on the page, and I printed out a PDF or a DWG. You saw that I could easily come in and create additional drawings and use those same traverses just by tagging them. Um, we didn't talk about it, but I can use the same traverse drawing settings in that new drawing, or I can have a traverse use unique settings in a drawing. Great, great tools to get exactly what I want. I really think all of that makes drafting fun again. I would just hate to ever have to go back to using a CAD program and the built-in routines to pick lines and label them when Traverse PC can pick traverses and draw the whole traverse just the way I want. You learned how I can use Windows um, tools uh, to zoom, to right-click and go to properties. So if, if I can run Windows, I can run Traverse PC. I don't have to relearn all this. And, and really, you can do all your drafting with just TPC and still talk to CAD. I, I love the fact that I don't have to run a CAD program. I can do all my drafting and submit everything directly out of Traverse PC. And when I need to, I can read and write CAD files and communicate with a larger community. And, and I, I hope really um, the sense you got out of this is that this would be a lot more fun than doing this in CAD. And I love this idea of always working on a sheet of paper, having the sheet in front of me all the time, just being able to move stuff around. And really the whole time I'm working on a survey, I'm generally working on at least one of the drawings I'm gonna produce out of it. And by the time I've got the survey nailed down and I know where I'm gonna put stuff, it's just boom, 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 I've got the rest of the drawings done. So really a neat technology. Uh, we started with it in Traverse BC in 1987. We've stuck with it because we like it so well. And it's the reason why, why people like using Traverse PC. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you for joining us today with our live demo on QuickView and drawings.